Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have our second subscriber build. A little backstory on this build. So Peter has reached out to his group of friends on Facebook and I responded to the post and the rest was history. Today's build is on the higher end of the spectrum with the cost of about $2,200 and here are the parts we are using for this build. The motherboard of choice for this build is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi ITX. This is one of the best motherboards you can get with the X570 chipset. The X570 chipset comes with key features like PCIe 4.0 and compatibility for upcoming next generation Ryzen CPUs. The graphics card we will be using is the NVIDIA 2080 Super. The 2080 Super is one of the best graphics cards you can buy today. For $700 USD, the price is steep. However, you do get a list of features such as hardware level ray tracing and DLSS 2.0. The CPU we will be using for this build is the Ryzen 7 3700X. The 3700X strikes the perfect balance between power and price. The 8 cores and 16 threads provided by the CPU will allow headroom for future games to take advantage of the extra cores. We are going with 32GB of Trident Z RGB. This RAM is rated for 3200MHz and is the perfect performance to price when paired with the Ryzen 3000 processors. 32GB is key for future games as some of the games are already utilizing 16GB. For storage, we are using the ADATA XGP SX8200 Pro. We are using 500 gigabytes for the operating system and two terabytes for game storage. Cooling our CPU is the 280 millimeter AIO liquid cooler by NZXT. The AIO is one of the best looking coolers on the market with the phenomenal infinity mirror. The performance is also as good as it looks, allowing ample cooling for the 3700X. The PSU we are going with is the EVGA 850W G2. EVGA is one of the most reputable brands in the market. Although EVGA is known for their graphics cards, their power supplies are also phenomenal. I chose this particular model because of the gold rated efficiency and the performance it offers for the price. The Fantex Evolve Mini ITX is loaded with features such as great cable management and airflow. The case also comes with two fans to get you started. The case is compatible with a range of liquid coolers and works perfectly with the X63. To help emphasize where this build stands with the best of the best in the consumer world, we're gonna be using this chart. This chart is not meant to be used as a detailed technical comparison. For reference, the CPU and GPU we are comparing this build to is the Threadripper 3970X for the CPU and the Titan RTX for the GPU. Other assumptions are for gaming, we are assuming maxed out settings for each respective resolution. For the video editing score, we are assuming there is no GPU acceleration, only CPU workload. Just as a disclaimer, this is only my opinion and my personal rating. Always do your research before making your purchase. Starting with the web browsing, this is an easy score and this PC will handle that with no sweat. So I give this a 10 out of 10. For 1080p gaming, the 2080 Super will provide a similar experience to the Titan RTX, hence the score is 10 out of 10. For 1440p gaming, I rate this build a 9 out of 10. The 2080 Super will provide a solid 1440p gaming experience overall. However, the Titan RTX will provide better 1% and 0.1% lows for the frame rate. For 4K gaming, I rate this build a 7 out of 10. The 2080 Super is not quite a 4K gaming card. It will provide a passable gaming experience if you lower the settings. However, the Titan RTX will provide good frame rates with high settings across the board. For video editing, the 3700X will edit videos perfectly fine. However, with 32 cores, the 3970X in the market, relatively, I rate the 3700X a 5 out of 10 in terms of video editing performance. Okay, with that rating chart out of the way, let's move on to the build montage.
All right, before wrapping up, I wanna mention my overall experience with building this PC. Overall, I didn't run into major issues. However, there are two caveats that I wanna review with you guys. The first caveat is the number of fan ports that this motherboard has. Because of the form factor, there are only two fan ports. So if you are running a case that has more than two fans, including the CPU fan, you need to use a splitter to use this motherboard. The second caveat is the AIO in combination with this motherboard and RAM does have some fitting issues. Because the inlet and outlet ports rub against the RAM sticks, I had to rotate the AIO 180 degrees. I want to thank Peter for allowing me to build this PC. I do hope you enjoy this computer for years to come. And I really hope you finally can lead the team in Rust and with more games to come. And thank you so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the like and subscribe button. It will help me tremendously. I can continue to do what I am doing today. So if you have any questions about making your dream build, please leave a comment below. Or if you have suggestions to improve this video, also please leave a comment below. And thank you, and I see you next time.